Okay, I have it uh, seven o'clock by my computer, so I'll call the meeting to order. Um, I did not hear from Donna as to whether there's anybody from the public. She did not say heard. that she had anybody, so. We did not have anyone from the public request um, admittance. Okay, great. So uh, we'll uh, move forward then. <clears throat> uh, approval of the minutes from uh, last meeting. Do I get a, uh, any discussion or conversation about the meeting minutes or can I move for approval? Not seeing any um, indication that we want to talk about this any further. Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? I move the minutes be approved. Second. Catherine, you really need to approve it because nobody else is there. I was just trying to unmute myself. Second. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, uh, I, uh, all in favor, raise their hands. Okay, meeting minutes are approved. Uh, let's move on and do the normal stuff then. Um, the reports and the informational items. Nancy, you want to kick it off, please? Sure. Um, the first thing I had down was the status of the construction project, which um, I wrote one thing up and then things changed today. So, so. Um, every time we think we're getting closer, we're not quite there yet. So um, I believe since the last meeting, I don't believe at the last meeting we had the anything about the east entry, the east square. We were almost we were almost done and looking toward um, reopening. We were hoping for early June, but since then we have had a discovery that the area in the east entry, which is right as you walk into the east lobby of the library, there's kind of a, a tall trade ceiling. Apparently that used to be a hole, used to be a pass through to the upstairs of the library when the library was first constructed. And it stayed that way from 93 when it opened until about 97, as far as we can determine, at which point they closed off the hole to the upstairs, I think part of it was because it was, people told me it was kind of an echo chamber and that it was really super loud. So um, apparently when they did that though, um, it was not done with a strong enough structure to be truly load bearing. So it's a good thing that we only have some um, computers upstairs above that and carols and not, uh, not bookshelves. So, because it wouldn't have been able to support the weight for long. So um, starting tomorrow, they'll be ripping the ceiling out, um, at least the downstairs part. We don't know if they're gonna have to tear it all the way through to the upstairs or if they'll just have to go up to the steel underpinning. There are beams there, but they are too small. And apparently there's some other work that has to be done there as well. So we will be, um, for the patrons, they're gonna see the same thing for curbside that we've been doing all along. But the staff's going to have to go sprinting through the back staff area and out an emergency exit door and around to be able to do curbside. So, like I said, we decided to keep it on that side instead of trying to flip it to the other side because we thought it'd be too confusing for patrons. And the west side also has a lot of landscaping work and machinery in the way. So um, we're kind of MacGyvering another solution to providing service to patrons. Um, Teresa Myers, who, who left to go to Public Works Natural Resources for, for their PR position, but it, uh, was handling ours as it had to do with construction, is going to be handling the construction aspect of our PR and marketing still. So she's going to be overtaking some videos and, and publicizing our latest library ailments, if I can put it that way. Uh, we will know more about the length of the project and also the complexity of the project after they're able to take down the ceiling tomorrow and Wednesday morning. So um, I knew that that was coming this past week, but today found out that there are at least four or five spots that have to be investigated on the second floor. So we thought we were in the clear there. Um, we don't think we are. So some things have been diagnosed by the engineer. And so we're going to have to do some moving of um, shelving potentially and some removing removal of carpet upstairs 
to see what those cracks or flaws look like. So we're not quite out of the woods yet. Downstairs looks great with the exception of the foyer that's about to not look great. Uh, the children's area has been completed. So everything is, is moving back there. And um, someday we'll get out of curbside. So that's where we are with the construction. Um, let's see, if we go to the budget update, I have before, two before, you, before you do that, um, Nancy, right can I ahead. ask a question? Sure. So, so with all this activity that's been going on to you know, repair things as, as the city finds them. All those maintenance issues that you had from previous years that had built up and that you were looking for, um, I guess, support in, in remedying, are they all part of this project as well? Um, some of them are, uh, some of them weren't part of the project, but they're being addressed anyway as long as they're in there doing things. You know, we've had areas that were not um, originally intended to be part of the project, some flooring, some flooring in the staff bathrooms, um, uh, our hallway flooring leading into the loading dock, some of those areas that weren't slated to be done as part of the project, but as long as they're in there, um, they have attended to those, as well as I think the biggest was what we talked about last time, which is the teen lab area. So, so we have had quite a few other issues addressed. The keyhole is still being worked on, the keyhole that's outside, the outside portion of it near the children's department where we had the leaking and the other, other problems. It, does, it no longer leaks, it's being worked on now. So, you know, we still have some other issues. We have not had one of those torrential sideways rains where it leaks in all of our windows. Um, so, I mean, there are still other building issues. Our HVAC is not completely reliable, but there are some other smaller things that have been attended to kind of outside of the project. And all those those quasi maintenance safety issues that we were kicking around for a year or so, when you come out of this, you'll, you'll be absent those then? No, not all of them. I mean, no. not every single thing in this building will be up to code or, or fixed through this. This project was kind of limited in its scope, so. So the, so the, I may not have this right. So the, there were um, like some concrete issues and. The concrete issues have been addressed. Those have already been fixed on the east side. So the, the areas where we had the cracks have been and, fixed on and, the and east where side. And you were and worried the, about tripping hazards and yeah, things like that. The east side and the west side, those have both been fixed. Okay, great. And actually they're going to, um, kind of as long as they're there, there are, they have replaced the railing on the east side by the by the patron entrance and they are going to fix the stairs and the railings along the loading dock area too which are not up to code so those will be repaired as well okay thanks thanks for that additional bit of mm -hmm. information and nancy i was just wondering are are you getting pushback from the community for being closed like you were saying no. kind of a pr effort you know, we we were until we did a lot more pr um about what the the issues are and you know we do have the videos that were taken that we've pointed quite a few patrons to um etc and so after that actually we got cards and chocolate and all kinds of nice comments from patrons saying oh you poor things so you know no we have really nice patrons and some of them are frustrated as we are with just the length of time that it's taking but they've been very kind Okay, any other questions on this topic? Okay, Nancy, please. please okay, leave. we have um, submitted our preliminary budget to the department heads. So, so our budget, you know, our, our budget amount is negligibly different than last year. So um, you know, we have the same, pretty much the same base budget with a couple of exceptions. Um, one, we've had a couple of things that came up this past year. One is the obligation now to pay non-benefited employees one vacation hour for every 40 hours worked, I believe it is. So um, with our staff, it comes out to about three days a year for a part-time um, non-benefited employee that they are now, they have three days of paid sick time in a year. So um, I was trying to, 
to request that and was told today that I did not need to request that separately, that that would be something that would be added on to our budget um, through the city. So since we have a lot of temp employees that comes out to, we figured around $8,000 a year in six days for our part-timers, part-time non-medicine employees. But um, we are, as we had discussed at one point, trying to ask for several positions. We are asking for a full-time bilingual outreach coordinator. We've been talking about this for quite some time. That would be a librarian one position. And right now we have several of our bilingual employees that are, are doing a lot of our, actually all of our translation work, et cetera, and a lot of our bilingual outreach, but they also have jobs. You know, they have pretty much full-time job duties already. So we would like to have a more coordinated, concerted effort toward serving our Spanish speaking community. So we're looking for someone to, not to do all of the outreach themselves, but to coordinate the outreach being done by, by themselves and various other library employees that are bilingual. We are asking for um, the, the money to restore our prospector loan service. That is a service that we had abandoned this past year. The vendor would not negotiate, it's quite expensive. I think I had mentioned that before that we were we pay for our consortium with a whole eight branches about let's see we pay 52,000 a year for this service and I think Denver Public pays 17 so we were trying to to um, negotiate that a bit I don't know how negotiable it is but that is something that our patrons have really missed that is the service that provides books very quickly from books and materials from all over Colorado and from segments of a couple of other neighboring states. So I know I use it on a regular basis when I place holds. I'm always you know, fascinated when I get something from Denver or something from Grand Junction in two or three days. We did not have that this year. So when we didn't have it this year, we have had to use a lot of interlibrary loan instead. And what that means is that we have library staff that look up through a catalog that covers pretty much libraries across the country and outside of the US too. And they have to often make a lot of phone calls back and forth to see they can find an item in another library. They have to call to see if that library will lend the item. And then there's mailing, actual physical mailing of items back and forth. So for us, we have what used to be a, rather, a relatively small amount of work on interlibrary loan that one person did as part of their job to something that three people are working on. So it's just not a cost effective for us to not have prospector. And I think it's been detrimental to the service we're able to provide because it takes a lot longer. You can get anything through interlibrary loan if you're a patron, but it may take weeks or a month instead of a couple of days like prospector. So ask for that to be refund or funded once again, not refunded. We're asking for a couple of 20 hour part-time non benefited positions for children and teens. Now that we have that new teen area, we actually need to have a little more staff to be able to staff that service point. We do not have any room in the teen or children in the teen and children's workroom area to smush one more body in there. So we pretty much have to go with some, some part-timers that can come in and come out and not need a dedicated desk space there. Um, we have asked for our Wi-Fi hotspot maintenance ongoing. We have 89 Wi-Fi hotspots at this point. Um, I've counted sometimes, some days we have 85 checked out out of 89. So they've been immensely popular. The Friends funded our initial nine hotspots. We received 80 more through a grant, but they have a service contract every year. So we've asked for $9,600 to keep those hotspots going. We've asked for a computer lab coordinator since we are looking to relocate our computer area upstairs and expand that area where the compact shelving used to be. Uh, we are looking for someone to coordinate classes and our efforts up there. We are asking for a new large scale printer slash plotter. We have one now, it is quite old. We print posters and signage, not only for the library, but for other departments. And um, it's requiring a whole lot of, of maintenance and, and babying every time we use it. So um, the, I think, let's see, we asked for, I think one last thing, in addition to our regular budget, we are looking for pre-processing pre costs for library, adult and children's fiction. I've been talking about this since I've been, since I got here. 
this is the only library I've worked at in the 20 something years I've been in libraries where we do every bit of the processing of materials by hand. Everything gets backed up. It is not cost effective to have staff doing that. So we're looking to have our vendors um, initially do all of our fiction materials. What that means is that when we order them, you pay a small fee per item for that item to have the stickers, the barcodes, the stamps, um, the RFID tags put on them, as well as the Mylar plasticky cover that goes on them. They come to your library ready to go on the shelf. So you check them in and you put them on the shelf. Right now we get all of them just naked from the vendors, just as though you would have gone to buy it at, at the bookstore and we have to do all of that by hand. So we end up with all of our materials um, sitting on the shelf for quite some time in the back before they end up in patrons' hands. And that's a lot of staff time. So in the long run, for the most part, it is usually less expensive, at least for the fiction materials, that don't have to be cataloged or catalog records changed. It's more cost effective to actually have that done by the vendor. So uh, the rest of our budget is pretty much, those are above and beyond what's in our base budget. Our base budget has not changed, like I said, from last year. It is what it is. Um, and so we've shifted a bunch of things around in our base budget to try and better match what our actual spending has been. We didn't really look at 2020 as any sort of um, comparison with, you know, because it's just totally abnormal. So when we look when we look at our line items in our base budget, we really look at how they've been spent or not spent over time. So we do have access in our budget system to the last four years of data for comparative data. And so that's been really useful just to look and see, oh, look, we always overspend here. Oh, look, we always underspend here. So we are making progress. Um, some things that they've been adding to the budget process this year are some explanations of how our budget requests support equity, diversity, and inclusion. So that is something that's that's not terribly difficult to look at with library budget requests. It's you know hard to say that a bilingual outreach coordinator does not support um, equity, diversity, and inclusion, for example. So, so we we feel pretty good about what we've submitted so far. We're still in the preliminary stages though. Will you give money back to the city this year? We did last year because, you know, there's no way that we could, I mean, some things we just couldn't spend money on because it was COVID. So. No, I understand. I hope the city recognizes that. Do you think you'll be giving money back in 2021? I hope not. I hope we spend every dime. So but the best I've ever done was at one library in Illinois. I was off by nine cents for the entire year. That was kind of a fluke, but um no, I hope I hope we're able to spend it all this year. Okay, great. Any other questions for for Nancy? Well, Catherine and then Tim. Oh, just briefly, I was wondering if there are any other like linguistic communities that need, you know, translation services. I'm I'm not familiar in Longmont if there's this like another substantial community outside of the Spanish speaking community or if that there are some growing segments of the community that speak other languages, but so far not not a huge significant number. So um, you know, you're looking at 26% of the of the population that's Spanish speaking and that's very significant. There are some other languages and we are adding to some of our kind of world languages collections, but we've not seen um, a huge growth in other segments yet. Councilman. Thanks, Mark. Um, Nancy, what's your top line? Um, regardless of all of the, the line items in the budget, what is it roll up to in terms of total dollars? I think we're at I'm trying to think we're at three, we're at 3 million, 800 and something. Okay. Cause 4 million is what I've had in my head, right. Little, as the, as the rounding. That. Yeah. Well, you got to add 200,000. <laughs> well, uh, so uh, the, here's a follow on question. Has anybody asked you about one time, what would be your, your priorities for one time expenditures in 2021? You know, we have a couple of priorities, but we, you know, we're going to talk about this and in, in, I think a little bit later in this meeting, but there are a couple of things that we're looking to spend some Mosher fund money on too. No, I'm not talking about Mosher fund money. I'm talking about general fund money. No, you haven't been asked if you had, if you have recommendations or proposals or priorities 
for the expenditure of one-time general fund money in 2021? Well, we weren't, we weren't told not to. I mean, so I could put something in. I mean, the things that we're looking for, that we were looking for a potential Mosher fund money, but it could be a, a general fund, would be our electronic sorter. And that's, that's about, that's about 225000 for that project. And um, the other thing that we're looking, looking to put in, like I said, is put in a computer lab space upstairs. So we've been talking to a company called Vary, V-A-R-I, that does glass panels that link together that are about seven and a half feet tall so that we could use those to um, both make a computer lab in the area where the compact shelving is now that we're getting rid of and also use those to enclose two more alcoves for a study room. How much is the printer? The plotter is 5,300 and something. So, so we're that, asking for that. Well, I'm, I'm just yeah. suggesting last Tuesday night, we, were, yeah. we got our, in our first budget discussion and presentation from Jim. Mm -hmm. And uh, we grossly underestimated what, what general fund revenues would look like in 2021. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. for the first time ever, we were asked if, if we had recommendations or priorities for one-time expenditures. Had I known we were going to get that question, I would have chatted with you ahead of time to say, <laughs> no give me your list, right? Yeah. Um, so I, I offered a couple of ideas. Mm -hmm. But as, you're, as I'm listening to you now, I'm listening for, well, what are the one-time expenditures that you might mm -hmm. you know, have in that mix? And the printer's one of them. Mm -hmm. If you would send me um, even just a sentence or whatever whatever description with a dollar figure, mm -hmm. I, well, I promise you, I will follow up to say, let me add Harold to my, you know, to my recommendations okay. for one-time expenditures okay. in 2021. Um, if I was looking at those, I would also look at some furniture and furnishings for our new teen space because we didn't have that space and didn't expect that space. Yeah. And also some, um, I don't have a quote on this though, but new shelving for the children's department. The shelving is just abominable in the children's department. It's ugly, it's delaminating itself. Little by little strips are coming off and it almost fell apart when it got moved to do the carpet. Don't be bashful. Give me, a, give me, bashful. Give me a list of descriptions and a, a dollar list. figure, okay? okay? And I can't make any guarantees other than I'll, I'll get it, uh, I will get it into the, into the queue. But I, and I also promise I'll follow up on it, right? Okay, yeah. I, will, I will be happy to send you a list of things we'd like to spend money on. Yeah. So. One time, one time expenditures. All, one time, I the other it. things you talked about sounded like ongoing, you it's know, personnel ongoing. and yeah, yeah, services. Yeah, for the printer yeah. plotter, those were ongoing. Yeah. So, all right. Thank you, Mark. Can I ask Nancy, what vintage of the strategic plan are, are you working on? We don't even have one, Mark. It, it expired right before I got here. So okay. we were, look, okay. so we were so looking that, originally, we were looking toward, originally toward, the material and findings from the consultant to inform our next strategic plan. So, okay, I was just thinking in in uh, response to the councilman's question that might be a a source of of uh, ideas for you to pass along as well if mm -hmm. it was current. We do have some. I will send that along some. Some info, though, because some of the things that we're looking at were things that were clearly identified by respondents to our uh, feasibility study. So that'd be real helpful to be able to connect or ground yep. whatever else you would add to that list in yep. what, you, what, what you've heard. Um, you know, and I don't know that there, it, I don't know if it'd be worth going back to anything that might have been in the quality of life survey from, you know, a year or so mm -hmm. ago. We haven't we're behind the curve. I think we need to do that again. I'm, mm -hmm. And I talked to somebody about that earlier today. Uh, but, but anything in terms of one-time expenditure, that we could talk, uh, tie to a, an identifiable need or as Mark was suggesting, an objective to say, if we're serious about this objective, um, this, is a, this is a necessary expenditure if, if we care about, seriously care about objective X, whatever it is. So and we, we're well, allowed to get a jump start on your feasibility recommendations. I mean, True. seriously, I mean, if, yeah. if you had something that was clearly a, a, a strategic objective for the library, and now's the opportunity where you might mm -hmm. get some funding, seemed to me that would be negligent not to at least put it in front of council. Well, and looking, looking at the, that computer lab space that we're talking about, 
you know, we were, that's one good thing, I guess, about being closed for a while is that, you know, you get really intimately acquainted with your building. We looked at that compact shelving that was really not being used upstairs and that that would be a prime space. If there's anything we learned from COVID, it's how wide the digital divide actually is and how even when we give folks you know, a Chromebook or a Wi-Fi hotspot, et cetera, they don't know what they're doing with it. So I think, you know, what what we heard over and over during COVID from our patrons and when we spend a lot of time on the phone and now by our texting, a text librarian service is that, you know, they need more than actually the machine that they can plunk down at at the library, but they need the instruction that goes with it. So, you know, some, some things have come from, um, Previous strategic plans and also from our first our first part of the feasibility study, but some things have come from have emerged from COVID. If what did people miss the most, need the most that we don't have. So well, I did, the only other thing I'll say is that this is the first time uh, we've been asked ever in a budgeting cycle, but especially in the middle of a year. Well, do you I have will a wish, give you a list. Do you have a wish list? And I um, sure do. Like, yeah. So Let's not miss the opportunity. No, I will be. I will happy to give. I'll be happy to give them to you along with accompanying price tag. So. Okay, great. Uh, any more questions on the budget? Uh, this is just a quick <laughs> one. You can see with Prospector, is that part of a group effort with the consortium? Yeah, so it Prospector. Up until now, it was always a consortium effort, a combined effort. And this year as a consortium, you know, we could have afforded it, but some of the, the libraries could not. So they were one of the few vendors of any sort of electronic resource or other resource that would not negotiate at all. So we all decided as a group that we would not use Prospector this year, hoping to have a little bit more bargaining power, et cetera. It didn't really work with them. So, um, I don't know whether the consortium as a whole will choose to go back to Prospector next year or not, but you know we're looking at it as our patron service at this point. So some of the libraries that, especially a couple of the smaller ones that they barely had any patron complaints about the lack thereof, but we do a lot more um, lending, um, a lot of borrowing and a lot more borrowing and lending from than other libraries do in our consortium. So. I think we're using more in staff time than, I mean, I know we're using a lot more staff time, so I think it'll actually be cheaper for us to go back to Prospector than to stick with a, a lesser service. Okay. Um, I will uh, move on unless you have something else, Nancy. Uh, yeah, we have, you know, your basic library stuff, but, but I can, you know, send that out or Summer reading is coming. Most of our programming is still virtual because we had no idea when we would open. So still doing a booming curbside business. Very good. Uh, friends of the library report. Yes, I have. Uh, they had their annual meeting on May 19th. Uh, the board will not meet until Wednesday of this week. Um, at the annual meeting, uh, the treasurer, Lynn Newberry, gave her report. Um, they... Their past year income has been about one fifth of the amount that's been earned in prior years, obviously due to the pandemic. The income they did have came from the lobby shop, their online sales, the gift shop and dream world books. However, they do have an amount of savings that was held and this has funded the programming for this year and it will continue to do it for in the future. Uh, the quarterly book sales should be able to resume later this year. They're hopefully looking for one sometime later in the fall. Mm -hmm. They have four vacant positions on the board, so they elected four new board members. Um, a gentleman, Frank Siskowski, who has been working with the treasurer to learn the treasurer's duties. Um, he'll need to be elected by the board at the board meeting. Uh, Wanda Ferguson, Linda Stewart, and Maria Karagianis. And um, that was pretty much it for the annual meeting. Uh, Nancy gave a wonderful update about the library situation and she was, had some questions and so forth, but uh, it was a good meeting and I'll learn more at the board meeting on Wednesday. 
Okay, any questions for Kathy? No, but it looks like we have a member of the public who just showed up. <laughs> member of the public <laughs> wish to be heard? <laughs> This is Miriam. <laughs> oh, look at she's so big. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll hold that in abeyance till she wants to say something. <laughs> uh, okay, City Council uh, liaison report. I um, asked to have a couple items just included on here, um, Councilman, to to help us stay current with some of the things that might impact the library at some yeah. future point. If you can pass along what additional information you might have in that regard in your report, that would be great. Yeah, I've had a, um, well, let's just, let's just focus on that. There, I mean, if you have questions about fireworks, healthy choices, uh, or anything else that we've talked about that's made the news, I'm happy to answer questions if you have them. Um, but if we stay kind of in the flow of, of, of what we've been talking about, um, I've, I've had a couple of conversations with leadership of Lapai, uh, the most recent of which included um, uh, Harold Dominguez and another council member and um, uh, tr trying to help them uh, think through uh, the timing on a strategy, what that strategy might look like, especially if if it was a strategy crafted with friends of the library, depending on what we see from, a, from the consultant working on the library feasibility study. So at the bottom, by the way, that what prompted that was the, and I see it's on the agenda, is the, the next item uh, under, under my report is the museum. Um, uh, how, how we turned the public engagement process and where they're going with the update of their strategic plan. So we'll talk about the, the combination of these things. So um, it, one of the outcomes of the conversation with Lapai leadership was Bob Balsman, who is the chair of that group and is the director of the corral, was going to follow up, Kathy, and, and, and reach out. And I, I offered your name, but reach out to Friends of the Library um, to, to invite people to, a, you know, just to have a conversation over a cup of coffee. Do you know, either you or Nancy or anybody else in this do you know if that's happened? Um, I don't think it has yet. Um, and I don't know that it's, that it's urgent, but I do think it's going to be important for the leadership of Lapai, for, for the city leadership and, and Kim and others involved in the library, uh, the update of the strategic plan, and anybody um, uh, to whom others would listen uh, about the library and what might be coming as a result of a feasibility study. Uh, just so that there should, can be some coordination of messaging um, and, and, and the value of people thinking about what does it look like to work together on these things. Uh, one of the things that, that came up in that conversation, which was a surprise to me that we were, that we're thinking about this as a possibility, is the, is the possibility of... Um, if we got a if we got a recommendation, whether it's to create a library district or not, and I see we're going to talk about the what Boulder's doing um, in their decision, but whether it's a dedicated sales tax with the library staying in the city or uh, just a proposal, a recommendation to council to create a library district, uh, that question, for the first time I heard Harold talk about that question potentially um, having enough being closely associated enough with um, the Performing Arts Center and recreation facilities that we could roll all those up into one potential ballot question. Now, it would be a surprise to me if we can actually do that since the last bond election, we couldn't put the Civic Center, um, the Justice Center, and the, and the recreation services together in one ballot question, right? We had to put those into three separate ballot questions because of what what is the, what the law prohibit or prevents or restricts in terms of what's called log rolling to roll disparate questions or, or projects into one question. If we could, if we could put all those in one question, um, you, you generate a pretty broad support base in the community for, for whatever that question is. If you put our performing arts community, our friends of the library, and not just the friends, everybody in town who loves the library, 
and um, the whole west side of town, if you were to put a rec recreation center on the west side of town. Um, if, if, we, if we got legal advice that we could do that, it kind of changes the thinking about what a strategy might be. But in any case, it is, it is not too early for Friends of the Library, the leadership of Lapai, and Friends of the Museum to, to come together over a conversation, over a cup of coffee to say, what do we say or not say that advances the interest of, of, of all of these potential initiatives without confusing the public? Um, the the, the Lapai group is really, really nervous about what's going on with the library and, uh, and the, there's gonna be a public engagement process or event on June 4th, I think. Um, June 3rd, um, because of what they've heard about the potential for a 500 seat auditorium as part of the, uh, the, the not just the plan, but if the plan were to be approved, the, the, the redevelopment or new development around the, around the museum. Um, I, I think it's unlikely in spite of what, what Kim hears from the community and in spite of what the aspirations are, I think it's gonna be highly unlikely that the ultimate, that ultimate plan would include a 500 seat auditorium just because of parking constraints around the museum. Um, you, you couldn't, you'd have to close down the rec center to host an event that would, that would accommodate 500 people just for the parking. So I, I just think as a practical matter, um, that's unlikely to, to happen, but, but there's a buzz about it and the Lapai folks are really nervous about it. So so the, the agreement was that Bob is going to work out to work, reach out to friends of the library to start a conversation about what, how do we work together, assuming wh whether it's a, a library district or dedicated sales tax, so that we get that everybody with an interest in kind of the future and the next big opportunity to create or enhance, strengthen amenities in Longmont. Uh, we do this in a way that we don't have winners and losers. We just we have a bunch of winners. Um, I'm happy to play a role in that if I can. I, I, sh I shouldn't have to. I'm happy to make phone calls or whatever. But Kathy, you should just be aware. And if uh, and I'm happy to follow up with the Lapai folks and say, you were going to call friends of the library. Uh, that would be a good idea to, idea to do today, right? We shouldn't let this linger. So, um, in terms of in terms of strategy, uh, I, there won't be real discussions. I don't think about strategy until there's a uh, the result of the library feasibility study, there's a little more data gathered on the museum. Um, we're already starting to hear from uh, advocates for recreation centers. How many, how many of those voted for the pool and ice facility or against it? I don't know, but there's a lot of interest in, um, in and not just interest, kind of expectation that, um, that we need to return to uh, the, the conversation and then a proposal that would uh, look more like a rec center and less like a competitive swimming pool since the school district's going to build one of those on their own. Um, so that's a ramble, Mark. How much of that is helpful? Um, it's all the perspective you can uh, provide us, I think, will ultimately be helpful. I mean, we don't, we're at the point in the process in my opinion, we're, we're, we're grappling for um, the right road to travel. And, uh, you know, we don't have our maps detailed enough to know what that yeah. is. Feasibility study, in my mind, will, will help clarify that. And um, to the extent that there are activities being conducted by the museum or being put forward through the museum initiative that would impact what we're thinking about or that we can benefit from or, or coordinate with them to achieve for both our, our goals. And I think we want to know that and think about it and yeah. figure out how we can best use it. Yeah. Um, as, as Nancy was responding to uh, I, I, maybe it was Cynthia's question about uh, where are we with, or maybe yours, Mark, with, um, uh, the this new discoveries about work that has to be done that we weren't anticipating, uh, and how it's delayed the whole schedule uh, for the the updating the construction schedule for the updating of the library. As I was listening, it occurred to me that um, 
if Nancy, if you're interested, Mark and 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 maybe if not Kathy, then friends of somebody from the Friends of the Library, some combination um, of folks with interests in the library and in leadership roles um, that we would schedule to do a backstory. Um, uh, I, we recorded a backstory today um, uh, on the new legislation on gun, uh, gun safe storage of, of wet firearms and, and um, reporting of lost and stolen firearms as one of a series to try to do some educating about um, what we can do to reduce risks of gun violence. Uh, I don't know what kind of reaction that will get, but I would be happy to schedule to do a backstory. I don't know if you've ever watched any one of those, but it's just storytelling, right, about what's going on in the city. But it may be worth telling the story in two segments about the library. One, just kind of an update on where we are with construction and what should people know and when will we open and to hear from the friends of the library about their interests. Mark, you as the chair of the advisory board um, and, and, and do kind of a, a uh, what's the right term, uh, a bait, right, for, or a, a teaser for what's coming that, you know, tune into the next backstory on the library, and we'll, we'll be presenting the results of the feasibility study and what it might mean for us. Um, so if you want to do something like that, I'm happy to put it together, uh, and, you know, we can promote it in any way we, you want to, to try to build some a viewership, but it's a way to tell the story about where we are, what she, people should anticipate, you could link it to the to the website. Do whatever else you want to do with it. Might be useful for the friends as well. Okay. Well, for my part, let me think about it. I'd probably yeah. want to chat with Nancy. Sure. To see if we could offer up anything interesting. Well, I have no doubt I know it'd be she interesting. Could. I'm not so sure I would, but. Well, I I, I don't doubt it would be interesting. What we know is the, the library is the most highly valued asset in the community. Right. I, I think a lot of folks would be interested and um, and, you know, we'll spend some time crafting the kind of questions you'd want to be asked so that we have a chance to you get a chance to respond to the questions you want to respond to, um, both about the reopening and about what's kind of on the horizon. So. Um, other than that, June 3rd, there will be an event. There's a scheduled event on June 3rd at the museum uh, as part of their public engagement process. You might. You know, it wouldn't be a bad idea to just to drop by and see how they're approaching that if um, if you've got time to do it. I would do it, except I'm going to be out of town on the 3rd of June. So um, I won't have a chance to to participate. OK, any other questions for uh, the councilman? OK, uh, let's move on then. Uh, I have old business, uh, update on the feasibility study. Um, anything for us there, Nancy? I have an update. So it, it took a while, uh, but the contract has been shaken loose and sent to the consultant. And I believe it's been um, completed and returned. There were a couple questions and which, I, which have been answered. So I, will, I hope to be talking to Annie Seeger, our consultant, within the next day or two about setting up our initial meetings with our team that's gonna be kicking things off. We are hoping to involve some of the folks that were in on the interviews with the consultant or at least somebody from the board, um, uh, the Friends president or someone else from the Friends board. Uh, I am continuing to, I've already spoken with Kim, the museum director who still wants to continue with that group of the consultants um, of the team or to be talking to the consultant. Kim and I have been talking quite a bit about their uh, strategic plan and their public engagement process. And I think there's a lot of um, congruence between some of the things that they are looking to accomplish in, in the museum and their organization and ours. So she will be a part of that as will Karen Roney, um, me, my management team. So looking at moving forward with that and seeing what the first steps are. The first steps I think will be, I think um, Annie has a, she's been just chomping at the bit to get that contract going to, to start working on this. So uh, she has let me know she has a whole list of things. So she has a list of questions for us and she has gone over that data the, of the first part of the feasibility study with a fine tooth comb and has found 
a bunch of things that she would consider holes that need to be filled in. So there will be some initial, some additional data gathering as well as some uh, probably additional public input questions to be put out there. So uh, we're really ready to get started. So almost there. Are you getting uh, any um, impression from Annie that she would um, have trouble beating the suggested deadlines by the fact that we we haven't been able to get to her? Is she no, gonna, I mean, have, I, will she slip that on her end? No, I think her deadlines are pretty flexible. And I had told her, you know, she and I have known each other for several years now. And I had told her pretty honestly, um, actually very honestly from the beginning that it would not start as early as she thought it would start because things would take a while to go, the contract would take a while to go through purchasing. So I don't think we'll have an issue. Great, great. Any questions for Nancy on this one? Okay. Um, uh, hey, hey, Mark, let me just, just clarify, what is the anticipated deliverable date? We had plucked August out of a hat, but it may, you know, it may even be before that. I don't know. We need to, you know, get in, get started, see what it is that we need and see if, you know, as, as soon as we can get her whatever else she needs to be able to, to create results. So. Right. What does that mean to you, Tim? Do we, is that um, an issue or not? No, I don't think so. The, um, uh, the, the Lapai folks are chomping at the bit, you know, to to figure out what kind of progress they can make with um, framing and presenting the results of a feasibility study of for a performing arts and conference center. And uh, but there are there's just a ton of decisions that have to be made, uh, including about their capital campaign, but management of a facility, governance of a facility, uh, the business plan. I mean, there's just a bunch of of and they're not problems, they're just decisions. Um, and they're not ready to come to the council uh, for any kind of a proposal or to the community without working through a, a number of issues. And I don't know where they are, honestly, Mark, right now with working those through. Um, I think they're early in their discussions. I think if there was, a, uh, if there was an August, if a, 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 deliver, a delivery date for a deliverable, right, or whatever the deliverables are from mm -hmm. this second phase, if that arrived in early August, um, it's probably the timing is probably pretty good to start putting people together in anticipation of the opening of a school year. And, um, you know, to the degree that this becomes something that people want to talk about during a campaign or an election cycle, I don't think that's a bad thing. Right. There'll be a visibility around big ideas or ideas, how big they are uh, during the, during city council campaigns. I don't think it's a bad thing for people to be asked where they stand on, on, um, on these kinds of ideas and potential development of amenities for the community. So Tim, I noticed that Annie had, um, she, well, she had done this before when I worked with her, but she also mentioned in her interview that, you know, if, if it was desired, she is perfectly willing to come speak with, you know, talk at a council meeting halfway through and then at the end, yeah. kind of say, here's what I'm working on. Here's what I'm seeing so far. You know, here's what I'm working on next. Here's what I'll present at the end of the study. And she said she's actually found that useful if you think it would be useful. Well, I think it honestly, I think it would be useful. What I here's do. what here's what would be helpful, Nancy. If um, you give me an idea what what the midpoint would be, right? Okay. Um, it's easy enough for me on a Tuesday night to say I'd like to direct staff to schedule sure. to place on agenda or just talk to, to Brian and yeah. and and given his prerogatives with the agenda. Um, to, to get a report, we could mm -hmm. do it early in the meeting, special, you know, as a special mm -hmm. item, um, just a status report on the feasibility study. That would have been, actually, I think that would have been helpful had, had the, the, the team working on the feasibility study for mm -hmm. the Performing Arts Center, had that happened, mm -hmm. it would have been a good idea. But I think you get, because it, it you know, generates questions, it, you know, not just at the end, so, so you, yeah. you, you know, if people have questions or concerns that you can address those before yeah. your final report, I, th yeah. I, th I think that that's something that she indicated that she thought would be useful. So yeah, I, will, I think I, I would agree. So I let me know. Let I know when, when I get more of a grasp and she has more of a grasp of the actual timeline, we'll, yep. we'll talk about that. Yep. And then I'll do my thing. So. 
Okay, great. Anything else on this one? Um, okay, Katie, can you lead us through the next one, please? Yeah, I don't know that this ever got sent to the group. It did? Yeah, it, it did. We just were reluctant to all right. They were like, I discuss like it without you being email. part of the discussion. Uh, and I was very hazy for a while, so. <laughs> uh, okay, so if everyone has, I'm, if everyone has access to, oh, disregard, I guess I can't. Uh, to the Emson and Mosier funds, does everyone have that document or can reference it? You can I see. I was trying to share my screen, but it's not really wanting me to do that. Can you see my screen? What do you see right now? I see the document. The document's there. Oh, you saw it? Okay. Yeah. It's not away, though. What? It just disappeared. Yeah, well, it didn't. It looked like I was sharing something else, <laughs> which is not applicable to this meeting. Uh, all right, so anyway, yeah, this is what we had put together, uh, or, uh, you know, I threw something together, I sent it to Mark and he reviewed it, um, kind of around some guidelines, I guess, for how to deal with the Emson and Mosher funds. Uh, so, really the kind of main thing that was front of mind for me when I was putting this together uh, was that it would be something that was top of mind every year for the board. It didn't just come up willy nilly. Uh, it was something that was a, you know similar to elections or similar to whatever else we talk about on an annual basis. It was something that we, uh, we talked about regularly but then throughout the year, the library was also really kind of thinking about, you know, we have these things that we ask the friends for, we have these other things that are obviously in the budget. What are some things that we could use these funds for? Let's put it in front of the board uh, and, and determine if, if those are, are good things for the Mosier and Emson funds to be used for. Um, so that was kind of my my thought process. So as you can see, the, dis the things that are really up for, that we thought would be good to discuss would be um, when to do that, or if everybody thinks that's a good idea to do it on an annual basis. Uh, and then this kind of bottom section here, so that we're in line with the library. So, and, uh, sorry, I got it. I'm going to try to do the minutes too. So I'm going to update <laughs> what I just talked about. But then if you guys, Mark, if you want to, I guess, lead the discussion. Well, I don't know. You were doing a good job. Sorry. All right, the, I'll, come, I'll come back. I'll remember what I said and I'll come back and do the minutes. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's, that's all right. I'll take a shot at it. Uh, but um, Feel free to correct me or yeah. um, steer this uh, conversation in a in a more productive uh, direction. But uh, so the idea, I think, is that, that there's a lot of money involved in both the Empson and Mosher funds. So as a board, we should treat that seriously because it does represent a lot of money and we should be good uh, fiduciary managers of, of that money. At the same time, I don't think we wanna create a process that needlessly impedes goals that the library has set out and it wants to um, implement through the use of these monies. One of the challenges that um, historically has, has been an issue with respect to the use of the, the money is, is the original purpose that was assigned to that use that you know, may or may not make sense or as much sense as it did when it was initially crafted. So um, 
part of the thinking in, in Katie's work here is to um, try and create a process where we uh, recommend to repurpose of uh, those funds or a portion of those funds so that it creates more latitude for the library in terms of needed items that, that they'd been precluded from before. So that, that'll be a process. Uh, I mean, it won't be something that will necessarily, in my opinion, be um, strictly uh, within the control of, of this advisory board, but we, we can make uh, recommendations to council and uh, hopefully the council and city staff will find the wisdom of that and then they'll go along with that. And that, that'll be the operational definition going forward. And we can try and create some flexibility that way. Um, with that increased flexibility, then that suggests a, a different spectrum of projects that, that might be considered how does that consideration occur? Do, um, you know, if it's, in my mind, it, it should be big items. It should, it should be noteworthy items. It should be things that the um, library would not expect to get from the friends and has uh, been unable to secure from the city. And, and these funds represent a last resort so to speak. And um, that's hopefully how all those engaged in this process will treat this. This isn't the, the first go-to to get the money. This is, this is the last best hope kind of thing. Cause I don't want to supplant, I wouldn't want to see us supplant the city in terms of stepping up in the budgetary process to support the library. That's, that's, that's been a, a, a mission of mine um, for quite some time now, and I hope this wouldn't deter that. Uh, nor, nor would I like to get uh, between the library and the friends because I think that's that's such a healthy and successful relationship. It, I think that that would be a mistake to do that. But assuming that there are a, a selection of of uh, projects that can be crafted or or put together that would make sense to be funded by the Mosher or Epson funds, then uh, I think as a board, we need to decide how we want to make that approval process occur. I mean, if it's a small dollar amount, as, as proposed here, maybe it's just majority rules. You know, you get, you get three out of five, they say they want to do it fine, let's go forward. As the dollar amount increases, then I think the um, inherent responsibility of the board increases. So if you're talking large dollars, I mean, really large dollars, I think we need a either a super majority or, or unanimity for uh, approval as a, a signal to council that this is something that the board strongly supports along with the library and that, that'll help um, move that approval process through and the check gets cut, so to speak. So my, my reading on all this uh, that uh, Katie so adequately put together was an attempt to try and one, figure out how we wanna use those funds going forward how we want to um, ex how we want to facilitate their use by the library, how we want to be responsible as a board to the um, expenditure of those funds. And um, also I didn't mention previously, but you know, there's probably some amount either already set up in the guidelines of the funds or ones that we should set up that says, we can't just spend it all. We, we can only spend 20% in any year or 30% in any year. You can't, can't just liquidate all the, the uh, seed corn, if you will. You've got to save some for another year. 
that that was my two cents. So, Katie. Yeah, I think that was uh, deal. And I mean, Nancy, I can, we're kind of looking to you because I know. I mean, always there's a wish list, but you have a wish list. You have like various wish lists, right? So I think the the we question do. for you is. Um, I, I think that, you know, this, if we're going to limit this to once a year, which is a little limiting, that, um, just in case, but it would have to be, you know, after budget time when we see what of our wish list items or our requests have been fulfilled or not. Um, so, uh, so could I just jump in? We're not saying that the expenditures occur once a year but just that the board gets a chance to look at the list once a year. Okay. Does that make sense? Can they look at it more than once a year? Sure. Okay. Well, you know, if the funds are there or whatever, and, yeah. and there's a timing issue, it yeah. doesn't all have to happen on January 1, I don't think. No. And like my, my understanding of the amount that can be spent, I'm not sure the exact number on the Empson fund, but the Mosher fund, because it has not been spent, there, you know, there's a certain amount of the fund that is expendable that you can spend now. And then there's a certain amount of the fund that is still, you know, earning interest in doing what the fund does. Because it's just sat there for a long time, the amount was close to $600,000 at the end of 2020. So there is that much money which can be spent. I would not suggest spending all of it, but I would suggest that it's sitting there. So... I think because because we anticipate that it won't that you know the friends you say I would like this and then they have a vote and then they're like great you get it. But I, I think amount. our antis our anticipation is that this could be a little bit more of a process. Like, mm -hmm. how does it fall within the parameters of each of the funds? We now need to go to the city to determine this. So I do think that it's a little it could take more time. So we it can't mm -hmm. be like let's review it. Maybe, I mean, mm -hmm. we could do it quarterly. That might be a little too often. We could do it twice a year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say that one of those times should certainly be after the budget is done. Oh, absolutely. That's, that's when you're really going to have like, we didn't get this, but we really need it. Well, yes. and kind of, so for, kind of what, so what Tim instance, was saying before, what Tim was saying before, there are budget years and there are budget years. You know, most budget years, you, you're not going to go if you're the library and say, hey, we want an extra $225,000 for this sorter that we've been talking about for years, because it's just not going to happen. So, um, yeah, I mean, I see, I just see this as a big ticket item thing also, Mark. I don't see this as a smaller amount thing. The smaller amount things, we usually do go to the friends and ask for them to help for, with those. I think that's a good approach, because if it's a big dollar amount, mm -hmm. then, then I could actually envision that the board has to make a pitch to council to make mm -hmm. sure that the council understands that we support this expenditure mm -hmm. and that, that, that they should think well of writing the check. Mm -hmm. And they may not do that absent that kind of support, but you wouldn't do that sort of thing for every $5,000 that the library no, no. wants but if you have if you have a couple hundred thousand dollars, I think that's probably required. Yeah. Would if we end up having a different funding scheme for the library, would that change anything with regard to our relationship with this money? Like, would it just mean that you get it, to see it in, in its entirety potentially? I mean, do we want to set it up? I guess I don't want to pass it. That's a question. I mean, that you'd really have to look back into the all the fine print of the original donation and see, you know, if the library, if, if the library, for example, went district, would this money still be available to the library, or would it revert to the city, or you know how that how that works? I think that's in the fine print. Well, I I think that's exactly right, and hopefully that would be something that um, would get covered in an inter intergovernmental agreement that this is. You know, this is who gets dibs on this money, and this is, you know, the kind of um, approval that they have over the, the authority to approve it. Mark, this can I just jump in just real quickly? 
part. Um, uh, if the, I think you're, I think you're spot on. If the, if there's a recommendation to create a library district, and um, that is approved, uh, and and we're going to talk about how what what Boulder's doing in just a few minutes. I can't. It's in, inconceivable in my mind that these funds would not, not go with the library. I mean, the library would have moved out from underneath the city. That money was dedicated, donated to the library. I mean, I, it, would be a, it would be a pretty weak case that a council would try to make to say, oh, no, no, those, those monies have to stay here, even though we don't have a library anymore. So probably I, I, the IGA would be the way to do it, but I just can't imagine um, that becoming an issue. The, and as long as I've got the floor, are you sure that the council has to approve expenditures of the Mosier Fund or either of these funds? They have to release the funds. They have to write the check, don't they? Well, who, 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 who did you hear that from? I mean, that's how we've done it. When Judith was here, that's how we, we always had to make a motion to the mayor <laughs> to release the funds. Okay, I, I, before you, bef let's get clarity on that. If you don't have to go to council, my strong recommendation is don't write this requiring that you go to council. If, 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 I, I, my impression was when the first time I talked about this with Jim Golden is that you have that authority. Now, maybe Jim doesn't, didn't understand, but, but let's clarify that. Well, I think we have the authority. Well, maybe we either have the authority to recommend or approve but we don't have the checkbook or the pen. So I mean, we can say, okay, we approve this, but somebody has to release the money. And that's, that's where the rub comes in because then you have to convince council or someone in the city that they need to write the check. Let's get clear on, on, on what's, what's stipulated in, yeah. in what the, whatever ordinance the city council then passed when they accepted the, the funds, assuming there was an ordinance or a resolution. Okay. Let, let's, let's get clear on that. Um, because if, because if, if you're authorized to approve an expenditure, then I don't think that would require, there's a ton of expenditures that get made to city that city council doesn't authorize. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's very few actually that, that, that come to city council for authorization. Well, I think I'm, I think that's uh, something to clear up with Jim Golden because I, I thought he said something to that effect too, Tim. And I was surprised that, that this was money that could be spent. So we can clear that up with him, Mark. Okay, so you'll take take that one back? Yep, I will. And, and where does that go? Does that go to um, Jim Golden or does that go to um, Karen? Or does that go to city manager? I would send it. I would, I mean, I would tell Karen I'm sending it, copy her and send and send the initial question to Jim Golden. Okay. Yeah, I think that's I think that would be the right protocol and the right I think he could I mean, Jim knows all in that area. I think he would be a good person to start with, or he would at least be able to steer us in the right direction. Obviously handle it however you want. My advice is do not put yourselves in a position to be uh, dependent on a council decision if you don't have to. So noted. So then okay. what's the, I guess, are we, I, I've never seen the quote fine print. I don't know who has on this board, if anyone. Um, What's the oversight then for the use of the funds if we're not asking council to approve it? Like, how do we, you could, you know, it was given for research materials or whatever. And we're just kind of saying, well, this is kind of sort of research materials. Is it just a, a trust thing or? <laughs> well, you, for, first of all, if you were, if you're authorized, you would have the oversight. So, and I, I, mean, I guess I'm asking who's, who's, do, could we see the actual documents so that we would know what we're actually able to? I think that's what Nancy's going to follow up. Yeah, okay. I'm going to get the copy of the actual of the actual document, Katie, because I think we just need to look and see what it says. We know originally 
that is that one was given for um, visual materials for right. folks with with um, you know lack of visual acuity, et cetera. But but you know obviously number one you can get almost all of the visual aids free now. Those are subsidized um, by local, state, and federal governments. So we're not going to spend six hundred thousand dollars on rail books, et cetera. So I'll have to talk to Jim and ask what happens when you have a bequest like this that where the the folks who originally gave you the bequest are no longer with us, et cetera, and, and what happens with, with that. Yeah, I, 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 I think there's two issues with that. The There's nobody to go check with nope. from what we understand. You can't go back to the original nope. donor and ask for an interpretation because they're not around. Nope. And in our legal, are we then therefore free to repurpose this as as we deem is most beneficial to the library? Well, I don't know the answer to that. My impression was when Jim and I spoke about this initially, mm -hmm. I think the answer to that was yes, that you had the authority to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and and maybe not. It may, maybe would have to go back on your recommendation as an ordinance that, this, that the council would have to pass an ordinance based on that recommendation. But, but that's a, that's an answerable question. And I think you ought to get an answer. And I also, I think you ought to understand, you know, way more about what the library needs are than your city council does. You're, you're way closer to what's the best and highest use of the Mosher fund or any other uh, source of funding friends of the library in relationship to what's budgeted and what your priorities are than, than, the, than the council is. You're, that's, why, that's why you do this every month. And I think you ought to not defer if you don't have to, because I, I, you are the best informed people in town about what to do with those funds, in my opinion. Thank you. We value your opinion. Yeah. Um, so... What do you think the next steps on this are, Katie, that they should take this after based on this discussion and come back and talk about it next time around now that we have some background mm -hmm. and rec recommend options or changes as to how we should do this or how, how do you want to take this? I mean, I really do think it's important. I, I think we really need to get answers on those two. Those questions seem pretty important. <laughs> to me because if we don't have a lot of wiggle room it's kind of moot we got to rejig everything if we have we do have a lot of wiggle room then i think then we yeah we can kind of come back and and make and make notes on this initial proposal um so i personally if you know maybe i don't i don't know if we can get it before the next meeting but if we can review the actual paperwork uh because, you know, quite a bit of this document could go, if we don't need approval, fantastic. That part goes away. That's a good amount of work. Um, and, you know, hours from the board, if we do have to go to council for approval, if we don't, great. Uh, but then also, you know, what is our, what is our wiggle room for the use of the actual funds? Because that will drive what we're telling the library to give us as well or I guess what we're asking for from the library as far as their wish list goes. So I think we need to get our, our hands on those copies and those answers before we do anything else. Do you see that as possible, Nancy, before next meeting? So we have that um, in our pocket. I can, ask, I can ask the questions right away, but we're in the middle of budget. So I don't know, you know what, what on the other side, what their availability is to answer this or, you know, maybe, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's an easy question for them. So I will talk to the city financial folks and see what I can find out. Okay, very good. Thank you. And then if we have answers to that, then I would recommend to the uh, rest of the board, if it's okay with Katie, that we think about changes to her document based on the information that comes back. I mean, if it's a if it's a no go, that's clearly one alternative. But if it's a go, then I think we should um, 
do like the councilman suggests is manage it within our own priority prerogatives. Yeah, I think if it's a go, yeah, we can put together a fairly, uh, I mean, I think we fairly easily can put together a project plan for it and move forward. Okay, on this one, any more comments before we move along here? Uh, okay, any uh, anything to report on the little free libraries, Kathy? Uh, no, since they haven't actually had a board meeting. Okay, so uh, okay. let's let's shovel on to new business then. Um, I'm not sure whether you all had caught this, but there was an initiative that um, finally was approved by Boulder City Council to uh, create a process which might result in a library district. As I understand it, and those that are, are more well read on the subject than I am, please correct me, but council was evaluating three, three funding opportunities for the library because there was a recognition that the library and some other Boulder City services were, were currently and historically underfunded, one of which was the library. Um, the choices, again, as I understand them, were to keep going, doing the same thing that they're doing now and maybe try and funnel some money over to the library to create a funding mechanism through uh, property tax support that would have city governance associated with it. So there would be um, a strong city uh, council control over the use of that money, even though there would be additional monies coming in. And then the third option would be to create a library district with its own governance and with the support of that same dedicated um, property tax levy. And they had different, different uh, potential millages depending on how extensive their catchment area was. And they, in, um, in the literature, were uh, throwing a pretty wide net. I mean, they were going out and pick, trying to pick up Niwot and uh, Gun Barrel and, and Lions and some other the other areas that um, Longmont had discussed from time to time. Uh, the uh, I guess the um, mechanism that they chose to try and drive home a solution on this was to create a subcommittee that will eventually be tasked with forming the intergovernmental agreement between whatever mechanism comes out of this potentially and the city. Uh, the council reserved the prerogative to appoint the trustees to the subcommittee that creates the IGA uh, un, as an unusual activity, the IGA would actually be done before the uh, library district or the follow on mechanism would be approved. So it, it, in some respect, it could almost be considered a poison pill because I mean, if this thing is, is really bad, nobody's going to approve it and it won't get any further. But if it's if it's viable and it looks like it's a positive occurrence for the library in Boulder and, and what have you, then it may move forward and they may elect to choose a, a library district as, as an alternative. So the process has just started as I understand, they've uh, got a ways to go. We wanted to make sure that our board was aware of it because some of the issues they're going to be wrestling with are the same ones that we've been wrestling with for a while now. And maybe we can learn something from the process uh, and try and um, gain from their uh, successes and try and avoid their uh, pitfalls. So that's kind of why it's on the agenda. 
Any questions on this one? Okay. Can I say what their timeline was? Oh, sorry, Tim, I didn't see your hand. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll listen. Good question. I was just curious what, what their timeline was and how that might align with our feasibility study process and all that. I don't know. I think they're driving to a ballot initiative, but I don't, I can't tell you when their deliverables are. I, I got the impression that the IGA would be produced in the fall. Do you know, Nancy? You know, I don't know, because at first I thought they were pushing for November, but now I don't know if it's going to, if they're looking at November this year or next year. And then I heard, but totally unconfirmed, that they were doing some kind of feasibility study now before they actually go to the ballot. They've done several studies, but not something that's really similar to our feasibility study. So I'll have to confirm. I have a meeting with the other directors on Thursday, so I'll have to confirm at that point what's going on and what their timeline is. Okay, good question. Councilman? Um, I read the, I appreciate the links to the articles. Um, uh, and I was, it, it was a surprise to me that the council um, had the authority to create the district uh, without going to a ballot. I mean, I know the 100, 100 vote or, or 100 signatures on a petition would get it to a ballot. Um, I didn't know the council had that authority. So that was new information to me. Um, obviously, the council doesn't have the authority to set a mill levy or uh, establish a sales tax, which is, which is where they're headed, ultimately. Um, uh, I, my, my impression is, as I, what few conversations I've been in, and I'm not with anybody with authority, I'm sure, uh, that, that Boulder County, um, I think, would take a dim view of of this showing up in 22 on the ballot, because I think Boulder County intends to have some other items on the ballot in 22. Um, and, and I suspect we may have some items on the ballot in, in 2022. I doubt we'll have um, uh, tax related questions on the ballot in, in November 21. So it could be an interesting ballot <laughs> uh, for municipalities and for the county in 2022. Um, so am I, did I track it right that the, that the city council made the decision and then these other activities, including the IGA to follow, which is a little different than the scenario, the sequence that we've envisioned here? That's my understanding is that the IGA is, is the precursor to approval by council and, and not a consequence of, hmm. of that approval. You know, I'd also read someplace, and I have no idea whether this is true, but of, of the members that council that voted for it, several aren't standing for election. And there's a question I think mm -hmm. on two others as to whether they might, would stand for election. So I have no idea what, what the life of this project would be if you get a new council in there and they have different set. It, yeah. it may accelerate the activity or it, may, it just may kill it. You know, I, I just don't know. Yeah, it's interesting. They they de they decided uh, not to just proceed with putting a a tax a tax question on the ballot and, and keeping the library inside the the city structure. It's also um, twenty million dollars, Tim. Yeah, well, I, I saw that number. We could we could, I just as a note, we could do really well on half that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well it, it was part of the reason for my question about what your top line budget is. Um, I mean, they're a municipality of a few thousand more people than us, but That's they just, they're asking for a, a budget of five times. Fewer than um, 7,000 more people and five times the money. Yeah. It's like a holy mackerel. Um, go big or go home. That's what somebody said, I guess. Uh, it is disconcerting that they're thinking about Niwot, Lions, uh, Gun Barrel, you know, and, and that kind of a, a footprint, because that's the same kind of footprint that we might be thinking about yeah, at we had some talked point. about that at one time, going that large a, a footprint just to cover, just to spread out the support. Yeah. Required. Well, so for, for some of the reasons, same reasons they're talking about, it just expands your tax base, right? Um, pretty substantial if you bring Niwot in. Um, so, you know, at the point where, where it looks like it's a possibility that that might be a, a proposal, uh, depending on where Boulder is, uh, that would be a good time for, for I don't even know who we'd approach in, 
in, in NIWAT. It's not like you've got a city council, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm not even certain what the governance structure is for NIWAT as, a, as an un, unincorporated um, entity. So uh, Lions is a, is a different story. We have a lot of patrons from NIWAT. We have a lot of well, patrons I know, from NIWAT I know. And I, and that's state that's state brain too. Yeah, well, and there, it's so. the school district. Their yeah. their their zip code is a Longmont yeah. zip code. Yeah, I mean, there's all kinds of reasons why it makes sense for them to be part of what whatever we do here. Mm -hmm. um, but there might be some, the need to do some outreach. I'd be happy if I, I won't get out too far of my skis. I, I mean, I've got some contacts in Niwot to to do mm -hmm. some sleuthing around. You know, how would that decision get made? Mm -hmm. and and get into conversation with folks I'll, i wouldn't do it without uh conferring nancy with you well this whole group and then oh yeah you know the, our our you know leadership of this in the city manager's office mm -hmm. well that was um, a, that was a desired consequence of the feasibility study at one time was was to try and evaluate the catchment area yeah mm -hmm. but as a knowledgeable person on this this activity reminded the group that with taxation comes responsibility. So mm -hmm. you've got to, you know, if you tax them, you got to put a branch in there and, yep. and that, and then you got to staff it and, and you got to yep. do all the rest of it. So it, it may not all be good news. Uh, the other thing that um, struck me as I was listening to all this um, activity come out of Boulder is, you know, de depending on how the, the news is shaped surrounding their, their um, challenge of meet, meeting and creating a library district or whatever, that can affect the public opinion here in Longmont. So if, if press goes negative in Boulder, despite our best efforts, that those people, people here read those same newspapers and that could affect our, our success right here. Consequently, or conversely, if, if it's all good news, then that may, you know, help our efforts here. But you don't know. Well, I've already seen uh, at least one, uh, not that the time, not that the, the TC line represents the mainstream of Longmont, but I've seen one um, less than less than affirming comment from from somebody who called into the TC line to say those idiot city council members are talking about creating a library district, right? Um, I don't know if you saw that, uh, but uh, it wouldn't. It's not a it, it's not a bad idea at some point, relatively soon, I think, to get very strategic and very intentional about the kind of messaging this, you know, that you'd want to do in the TC line, uh, potential letters to the editor, an op-ed piece um, that helps to, and that would be the reason for doing a backstory at some point in time as well, all about educating the community. We, we have our, our, uh, on the quality of life survey, mm -hmm. the library is the most highly rated institution in the city. It has been survey after survey. And, and that is uh, for an institution that's severely, seriously underfunded. So think about what it would be like if it was funded in the way to make it not just funded, but, but moving towards a 21st century vision of libraries, right? And drawing heavily from the, whatever the feasibility study suggests. And um, I think it's super important to get the information out that the second phase of the feasibility study is not looking at going for a district. It's looking at what the community needs, what the future needs, current, present, future needs of the of the live of the community are that a library can fulfill. How much that costs, and a variety of ways to fund it. Yeah, and you know, remaining a municipal library but set up setting up a different funding mechanism. Um, forming a district is one. Forming forming a hybrid is you know there are various hybrids that are others, but I think. It will be important at some point to say we're studying these various funding mechanisms, but we're not, you know, we haven't decided on what an optimal funding mechanism would be. So I think it's presenting people with the different options that's going to be really important. Well, I'm thinking more and more we ought to schedule a backstory and then get all the friends idea. of the library to, to you know, to go uh, put yeah. to 
on, on Facebook and other social media platforms, mm-hmm. uh, uh, drop the link in there and ha- ask their friends to, to like it and share it. That's a way to amplify, right? To get mm-hmm. to use social media uh, to tell the story of where we are and where we're headed and how thoughtful we've been about it, that no decisions have been made, except that, we, that we're serious about delivering to Longmont a, a library worthy of Longmont. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll stop talking. Any other comments on this topic? I think we had real good discussion tonight, board. I think this was a, a very positive meeting. Thank you all. Uh, I have as the last agenda, unless somebody wants to add something, is our next meeting date, which is June 28th. And with that, I'll open it up to any comments from uh, the board at this point. Seeing not, oh, what? There's one. I was just going to say I won't be able to attend on the 28th. I apologize. We'll be traveling. Seeing just the one, I will then adjourn the meeting at uh, 8.30. Hi, everybody. You. Nice to see you, Bye. Cynthia, and especially little Miriam. Nice to see you, Miriam. <laughs>